Hello, everybody, and welcome back to, to Day of the Tentacle. I am Rufal, playing this game for you. Woo! Hey, Tall, Dark, and Spiffy, my name's Hoagie. Well, how quaint. I am, of course, Thomas Jefferson, noted scholar, musician, horseman, student of the sciences, member of the bar. Oh, sure, I've heard of you, dude. <laughs> What's in the can, Tommy? Thomas, my name is Thomas, and this, my chubby friend, is a time capsule. Filled with remembrances of our time to be revealed 400 years hence. Ah. So, how's the time capsule going? I'm sorry to say that except for my log, we haven't got a thing. Hmm, that's not very useful. Dude, is that like THE Constitution? Right now, it's just a constitution, I'm afraid. We hit a slight mm. creative block right after the preamble. That's why we put up a suggestion box over there. Ah. Could you start a fire, please? Yeah, John Hancock is freezing. I love to you, young man, but I can't. This is the only log, and I'm saving it for posterity. Hmm. How could you let Hancock suffer like that? A real man is warmed by the fires of his spirit. You should listen to Washington relate his experiences at Valley Forge and take heed. Right. Has anyone ever told you you're a very snappy dresser? Why, yes. I studied at Virginia Coat and Technical, where I majored in color theory. I was captain of the varsity cravat team. Those are impressive credentials, Tom. Thomas. Dude, I loved your work on the Declaration of Independence. Ah, thank you. What was your favorite part? I like the we the people part. That's not in the Declaration of... Say, that's not bad. Maybe we can use it. <laughs> well, later, dude. What? What's going to happen later? Kind of full of himself, isn't he? If I had a nickel for every time I've seen that face. <laughs> and over here. Oh. Hello, sir. He looks oddly familiar. Excuse me. Yes. Whoa, you're like George Washington. Very much like him, according to my wife, Mrs. Washington. Fair point. Does Mrs. Washington know you wear so much makeup? One must wear makeup when one receives the phenomenal amount of media attention that I do. It's quite likely that I'll be president soon, you know. Do you think I should be the ecology president or the education president? Hmm. Depends on how many cherry trees you've chopped down. <laughs> well, I am quite the adept tree cutter. Men still tell tales of my youthful prowess. Would you give me a demonstration? I don't see why I should. Well, oh, fair enough. Do you really have wooden teeth? As a matter of fact, I do make use of artificial teeth. I find them to be far superior to the ordinary enamel variety. My Uncle Henry has false teeth, too. Fascinating, I'm sure. Cold enough for you? Cold? Why, you don't know the meaning of the word. I spent a winter at Valley Forge. Now that was cold. Why, my spit would freeze before it hit the ground. Dang. Cool. Extremely. Right. Oh! Let's engage in some shenanigans for the sake of Hancock over here. Or rather... For the sake of the animation, let's climb up the fireplace. Aha! That being said, there was really no point in doing that, so get back down there. <laughs> Well, let's help out poor Hancock. 
I'm offering the president a cigar. Excuse me. Yes? Mr. President, may I offer you an excellent smoke? Can you also provide me with a light? Sure. Well, in that case... This should be good. <laughs> Blast, I hate it when that happens. See if you can't find those for me, will you? There's a good lad. Alright, so he's in need of some fake teeth. Could you use these? Very kind, but those are much too large for me. Well, fair enough. How about these? Could you use these? Why, thank you, young man. Strange. I wonder if I should cut down on the coffee. Hey, Tom, look! The father of our nation is cold. Better build a fire. <laughs> You're right. Huh? I guess you can have my log. Me? Why should I build the fire? You build the fire. I'm bothered by the smoke. You build the fire. Oh, boy. I'm bothered by your attitude. You build the fire. This is perhaps the real no, reason that a fire, fire was not Mr. built. Penmanship? No, you build the fire, log lover. No, you build the fire. No, you build the fire. Two hours. You big baby. <laughs> All right. What else we got going on around here? Ah, yes. We do need vinegar for, for that super battery, but we're not going to find any. So we'll have to make some. By, uh, sealing it away. Thank you. This is exactly the sort of thing I need for the time capsule. I'll bury it tonight, and it won't be seen for hundreds of years. Future generations are in your debt. Whoa. 400 years to be exact. Navajo, I think. Let's pick this up, and we'll talk with and we'll talk with John Hancock, cause now he's not shivering. He looks better now. Hi there. Hello. Feeling better now that there's a fire? Much better, thank you. My teeth were grinding into a fine powder, and that blanket was really making me itch. What's with the canary over the fireplace? Oh, that's an early warning system. It's quite ingenious. The canary is trained to ring the bell madly the minute it smells smoke. Then we know the building's on fire and we run like crazy. Ah. Who thought of it? It was invented by Red Edison, the owner of the inn. Well, why doesn't the fire in the fireplace set it off? I assume it's because all the smoke goes up and out the chimney. Who feeds the canary? Actually, no one does. It's a self-feeding canary. It's specially bred with some kind of nutrient-producing bacteria in its gizzard. It's quite a time saver. I expect everyone will have them in the future. I see. Oh, Amazing, he's right. isn't Everyone it? will have fire alarms in the future. Nice painting of a turkey, dude. I'm glad you think so. The choosing of the national bird is on our agenda for the convention. Well, I thought the national bird was the eagle or something. It may well turn out to be just that. You see, there are two schools of thought on the matter. Ben Franklin and I are in favor of the turkey, whereas Jefferson and Washington, for some reason, want the eagle. But Franklin's always outside playing with his ridiculous toys instead of here where he belongs, so it becomes two against one. I'm not sure about Hancock, but I do know that, that Ben Franklin did want the turkey to be the national bird. 
What's so great about the turkey? They've helped us to survive since we set foot on this continent. They're symbolic of prosperity and the thanks we give for our lives here. Besides, they're kind of cute. <laughs> What's wrong with the eagle? Well, it's a bird of prey for one thing. I don't think that's an appropriate symbol for our country. Mm. Don't you guys have anything better to do? Such as what? Establish domestic freedoms? Come on, this is important stuff. I see. Good. Well, gotta go. Goodbye. Right. Let's see. There was something else. I'm trying to remember what it was. Oh, I guess it was this. Seems they're a little stumped, so I could use a suggestion. <clears throat> Boy, it's sure quiet in here. I wonder if there might be any ideas worth discussing in the suggestion box. Maybe somebody should take a look. I say, lads, I have an idea. Harassing Betsy with arbitrary flag design changes is getting dull. Besides, <laughs> last time she threatened to stitch me. No. I was thinking it's about time we open the suggestion box. Don't you agree? Sure, George, if you say so. Yes, whatever you think is fine with us. Excellent. Couple of yes men, aren't they? What's he thinking? No one of any importance has been here all day. What could be in the suggestion box? Perhaps he intends to suggest something himself. Oh. Ah, here's a suggestion. It says, George says that every American should have a vacuum cleaner in their basement. What do you think, gentlemen? <laughs> mm, whatever you say, George. Your name's on it. I'm sure you must have a good reason for suggesting it. Yes. It's strange. I don't quite... Well, I'm sure I had a reason for it. If there are no objections, we shall add it to the Constitution immediately. Uh-huh. No? Good. And so shall it be law. That's the important question. What's a vacuum cleaner? <laughs> it's one of those. Found in a place we haven't seen yet. Now I don't remember what it was I wanted to do. We kind of need some gold for that battery. Stolen from the desk of George Washington. Hey, keep your hands off that. Hmm. I have to do something. Whoa, it's filling up fast. You can look, but don't touch. Oh, fine, be that way. All right. Well, we're gonna have to do something about the Founding Fathers if we're gonna get a hold of some gold. Just about done with this. Then I'm grabbing the latest flag design and sewing it up. Then it's bye-bye, Betsy. Fortunately, there is not a time crunch involved with, with Betsy Ross. <laughs> dum de dum All the way to the roof. Sure far way to get them out of there is to uh, make that smoke detector go off. Ah, do it. Ah! Okay, who was the idiot who started the fire? <laughs>
Let's go out and see how those founding fathers are doing. No, we aren't on any form of time crunch to go and grab that pen. <laughs> they actually won't go back in until after we've uh, until after we've secured it. While we're here, here uh, George only cuts down cherry trees, and we kind of need this kumquat tree out of the way. I hope everyone's okay. I wonder if they put the fire out yet. The British are coming. Where? <laughs> I don't see anything. <laughs> I bet this never happens to Tom Paine. I didn't know you'd have to distract them to paint the tree while they're out here. <laughs> Makes sense, I suppose, but... Oh well. Let's go grab the pen. Fanny Fathers actually won't talk to us. Won't, won't actually talk to us, they basically just tell us to to go away if we try. Yoink! There, now there's a cherry tree. Cool view of the outhouses. <laughs> Hello, sirs! It looks pretty clear in here now. Say, did you get the pen on our way out? No, I... I found a blanket blocking the chimney. Son, do you know anything about a blanket? Uh, didn't the dude next to you have one earlier? Cool. Uh, uh hey, catch you later. Alright, let's let that simmer down a bit. Oh, actually, let's just go back in. Well, fire's out. Hancock's back to being cold. Jefferson is being Jefferson. As for Mr. Washington... Excuse me. Yes? I've been thinking about what you said about cherry trees. Pondering the great truth, eh? Well... I bet you've lost it. You couldn't cut down a tree to save your grandmother. Lost it, have I? Why, I'd show you a thing or two if there were a cherry tree nearby. But as you can see, there... Oh, well, what do you know? There is a cherry tree out there. Well, let's go chop the sucker down. I said come down from there at once! Try to understand. I'm stuck in this... Ouch. Voila. You're quite a man. Yes, I know. Hooray! Now Laverne is actually available oh, for us. So, let's send her something she'll need. Well, I waited, but she never picked it up. I hope she's okay. Hmm. That could be cumbersome. Well, we'll uh, sort out Laverne's fate eight, uh, next time. Let's see, what else do I need to send around? Can't actually send anything to Laverne. I guess we'll take care of, care of another puzzle while, while we're at it. Let's wash a car. Dum -de -dum. Looks like a big storm. See, this is why I never wash my car. Probably gonna be useful to Ben Franklin. Hey, Ben. Oh, it's you. Where are you going? What about your experiment? 
Even science sometimes gets cold on account of rain, my boy. But how are you ever going to get lightning if you're not going to stand out in a storm? To be frank, which I am, I don't know. The science of electrodynamics, much like your mind apparently, is still in a state of relative infancy. Ouch! Back to the drawing board, I say! What a genius. Well, that'll do. Next time, we'll take care of Laverne. We'll see you then. Later. <laughs>